<laughs> we're looking at internal food inflation, and let's touch on that. In fact, it's slightly to the negative, down 0.1% versus 2.2% uh, the previous period. Tell us about the inflationary environment. It's, it's a drum that we've been beating for some time when it comes to the overall food inflation basket. We know uh, real food inflation is sitting at 3.2%. Why hasn't it fed through into ShopRite? Well, I think the basis of, of measuring the food inflation in ShopRite is slightly different to that of the Department of Statistics. We mm. measure every single item that was sold this year compared with its price a year back. So the, the, the basket of items is not just the basket of items, it's also the number of times it goes through the till. Mm. And that gives you a good indication as to shopping up or shopping down. Effectively means that if you bought the same basket this year than last year, that would be the real inflation. But that's a statistical sample mm. which would always vary. Because we know inflation obviously gives you pricing power. So what does this number actually tell us, that you're, you're worried about pricing power going forward? It tells us that if the cost inflation keeps on pushing at 10%, we would have to find other ways of keep maintaining a profit mm -hmm. than the lowest prices in town. So it's a, it's a, it's a real worry in the sense that in, it's good to have inflation down, but then inflation must be matched on the cost level and in the, and in the food price level. It can't just go up in one area mm -hmm. and put pressure on that one. Are you concerned about profits down the line? I know that competition is rife. And the last time we actually spoke to you, uh, the likes of a Walmart, MassMart deal hadn't actually gone through and you were worried about pasta and, of course, long-life milk. And here we are. We, we've got Walmart that is going to be coming into the country, of course, with regulations. Where do you stand right now? What kind of strategies have you put in place to deal with the new competition? I've got myself one of these Asian <laughs> masks with Walmart on top of it, you know. <laughs> new epidemic coming into the country. <laughs> but no, it's not really true. Uh, Walmart is just a competitor as we have pick and pay, spa and all the other good players in South African market and there's really no real s change in the, in the situation. It's a new, it's a new uh, contender that we will just have to learn what they want to do and how they want to do it and then match with whatever we need to do. What kind of a threat is the importation of goods and are you going to be starting to change your mix with regards to uh, sourcing goods? in South Africa relative to imports? Well, we, 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 our imports of foodstuffs is less than 1.5%. And the reason for that is that we have built a module that actually can, can service our consumers or our customers at the end level that where we're in South Africa get something like 98%. If you're in a country such mm. as the ones that we trade in Africa, you were down to the 70% level because of the availability on a daily basis of certain commodities. And we would certainly not like the manufacturers in South Africa to go out of business because that A affects our customers because they lose their jobs and secondly we wouldn't want our supermarkets to to trade at a level where you can't get what you want to buy so it is a worry but I'm not sure if Walmart's going to import if they do obviously ShopRite being the cheapest store in South Africa and probably in the world <laughs> by now and we would have to maintain our position and then uh, people must expect us that we are ready to import whatever we need to import and maintain our, our price position. Okay, so in other words, more competition coming to the fore, uh, clearly from a ShopRite perspective. Well, ShopRite, ShopRite has a, st a strategy that uh, on our price perception, yeah. we don't give up on that easily. And we, you know, we also have telephones and we have faxes and we have... Uh, pigeons that we can send <laughs> over and get the stuff in cheaply. Okay, let's touch on uh, margins in South Africa, which is uh, sitting at around 5.7%. Uh, and non-South African margins, some have called it very uninspiring, also sitting at around 5.7%. Tell us about uh, the African margins that we're looking at right now. We know that there's a forex impact here. The strong rand aside, what kind of mar margins should we be factoring in for Africa? Well, Africa has slightly higher margins than South Africa, but there's also things now that it's influenced our non-African or non-South African businesses. We have 99-year leases and with all these new accounting standards, there's substantially different ways of accounting for the same accounting uh, results, but uh, that's uh, a factor of, of, uh, of uh, accounting standards. Uh, yes, it is higher because the cost of doing business in Africa is higher and to maintain the profitability that we need from Africa our, our, our margins has to be a little bit higher in Africa. But on the other hand, ShopRite would not sacrifice its corporate branding by taking advantage of high margins in Africa. And that's why whenever we go into a country, we try and bring the food prices down substantially just to get ourselves mm. as a big player in that market. Let's touch on your furniture uh, division because we didn't see fantastic numbers coming through from there, but then we saw competitors like JD Group and, for instance, Lewis coming out with quite strong numbers. Yeah. Tell us about what you're going to do to 
change things within this division? Well, firstly, the numbers you must see against the background that we are slightly different to the other groups in furniture. We're much more cash-based. We had a lot of deflation up, up mm. to 17% in the furniture division. And we're not really worried. We're trying to put down as many stores as possible because we get good returns from them. Yeah. The OK division itself did very well or did substantially better than what the house and home division was, which was trading in a different end of the market. So it's not really a, a situation that we are worried that our furniture business is going down the tube, in, in, in fact, the contrary. You're also sitting with negative cash at this point because you have been expanding quite so aggressively uh, when it comes to stores and you're also planning to open up I think, 24 new stores by mid next year. You're also looking at capex spend for your central distribution uh, um, division as well. Tell us about what is in store for ShopRite. It seems that you are very well geared for a massive recovery within the South African economy, something that people are still very skeptical of. No, <laughs> finally the stores would not be 24, 70 something odd, I can't, I'll lose track on them, but it's in excess of 70 for next but, year. Uh, next year, June, by next year, yeah. June. You know, the South African economy and probably the world economy is going through through stages of, of cycles. And I mean, if we don't level out those cycles by saying we can't stop investing if the world has a bit of a, a, a hitch like you have in, in Greece, uh, we would obviously, we can help you with some oil if you <laughs> want that. But uh, South Africa, we are quite keen to, to expand our business in a sensible manner. We've had surplus cash. We want to invest. Yeah. What happened in our African business where a lot of the uh, money went to is that the rand dollar exchange to the African currencies was very good. So it was a very good time to invest in what we invested there. Okay, so there's also a big figure which I'm trying to get my head around with regards to other um, operating income, which is on your balance sheet. Uh, sundry, it's called. Oh, around yeah. 700 million rand. Give us more insights into that. Oh, that would be the financial services and yeah. a lot of other areas that yeah. is outside the core business of the supermarket.